Here's my power supply that I'm going to use for my Hypercube Excel build. Um, I've drilled a couple of holes on the negative side of the output and two more holes on the positive side. Um, I placed them in the center and I'm going to use these screw terminals. I like these. Um, I should be able to just put the wires in and screw them down. That should make a very secure very good connection for my terminals and it gives me ability to quickly disconnect things should I need to move things around. I bought these on, on eBay. So basically I just measured the distance here, I lined, lined up the, the pins, um, made marks and drilled through. So now I'm going to tin these two locations and also I'm going to tin these two pads here which is the first pad and the fourth pad and to enable output to turn on this power supply when power is plugged in um, you need to short these two pads and initially I tried just using a regular wire and that worked fine but supposedly you really should use a resistor here and the resistors that I found mentioned were somewhere between 500 ohm and 1 kilo ohm. I happen to have a 1K resistor, so I'll use that. So let's get started. I put some flux on on these pads. These are gold-plated pads, so probably don't even need to do that, but just just for the fun of it, I put some flux and tinned one of these pads, and I'm going to tin here around the top hole and soldering this is kind of tricky because these are very big traces so they suck the the heat right out of your iron I may need to use my um, hot air gun to apply heat to these because my iron just gets stuck is sticking to the to the um, board here and doesn't really melt the tin all that great I'm sure that if I gave it some time the tin would melt but it's just kind of tricky to do this and I'm hoping that as I solder these connectors from the bottom there will be enough heat to melt this upper layer of tin and make a connection on top as well because I will not have access with my iron to the top once I put the connectors in. And this is a 30 watt uh, soldering iron so a decent, decent amount of power it should be able to uh, heat up this PCB but it's having a little bit of trouble. And whenever my iron is having trouble providing enough heat, uh, I just use my hot air station and that always works. That should do it. Hopefully I can slide this connector in. Yep, that goes in good. In here, in here. Looks good. Now let's take care of this resistor before we start soldering the connectors. So I'm going to just place this resistor where I like it. Right here. Make sure that it doesn't short out to any other pads. like so 
and then arrange the other pin, move the resistor out a little bit. And apply 10 and we should be good with the resistor. Alright, so let's trim off the excess wire from the resistor and let's flip over the power supply or actually I'm going to add some more flux to this side so it's easier to get this setter flowing Actually, also going to put some flux on the pins so that when I insert them, this flux will hopefully attract the tin, the setter, and pull it onto the pin to make a connection on both sides. I'm just trying to optimize the current flow and make sure that it's flowing from both the upper copper layer and the bottom copper layer to the pins. So let's flip the power supply over. Put some more flux on the bottom part. going to stick the connector in from the bottom making sure that this is the front I want to make sure that I don't mount this connector wrong way around so up my connector in like so and catch it with some tin with some solder I'm just gonna push up on the connector and this is actually melting much better on this side I wonder if the size of a copper pad on this size is on this side is smaller to allow it to melt better maybe maybe not anyway uh, pop the second connector in again just catch it with some solder I could use an extra hand Now let's switch on hot air and combination of this hot air and the soldering iron should get the job done. So I'm heating the area, I'm heating the PCB and the and the area with my hot air and yeah. This is melting easy now. And actually, let me see if I can add some solder to this. Because I want to put as much solder here on these connections as possible to make a really strong connection. Or uh, have a lot of current capacity. looks like the hot air just by itself is not doing it 
really needs this extra kick of iron and that's get that gets the party going for this side and I lost some bit of solder here I'm going to increase the temperature of my hot air This will help a lot. I was afraid that might happen just happened my connector moved because I heated both pins at the same time which wasn't very smart so let's see if I can fix this now now without hot air that is tricky I really need one extra hand now to be able to use my tweezers and and my iron and my uh, hot air worked. Now the second connector and again more than This looks good. I'm trying to see whether I managed to get that uh, solder flowing on the other side. Uh, I'm not sure if that worked. Would be nice if it did, but uh, even if it didn't, looks like the, these connections are pretty good. There's plenty of solder on them, so I think this will work. So that's my connections for the output. 
from the power supply. Now I can hook it up to my printer. So after I finished soldering the resistor and the connectors on the power supply, I plugged it into power to verify that it works, and it didn't. Uh, it turned out that the 1K resistor that I used, despite of what I read online, it was too large of a resistance and the power supply did not turn on. So I replaced that resistor with a 22 ohm resistor and this one works fine. Now my power supply turns on and supplies power and here it is hooked up into my printer with the brackets. The STLs for the brackets are available of course. Um, here are the two connectors. Uh, two of them two po positions are being used to power my uh, my controller and the other two positions will be used for the MOSFET to power the MOSFET for the heated bed so that will be one of the next, next steps and I've mounted my power switch and my power inlet in the rear so that's taken care of that's ready to go I ran the wires inside of extrusion And one more thing actually, uh, just to show you guys, I've mounted the display uh, so I can now print from SD card just like with my regular sized Hypercube. Here it is, actually it is printing now from, from an SD card. It's printing part for a new project. I will soon be making videos about this new project that I'm working on. And I have the same controller and the same display on my Hypercube XL. So now I don't need to uh, plug in my printer into the computer or I can run both of these printers off of SD cards while um, maybe playing with my mini Hypercube. 